Hey there, today I'm going to show you the best way to visualize survey data by the most popular question types. I'm Tyler Levin, founder of Visual Survey, a survey data cleaning tool that cleans your survey data from any survey software so you can visualize it in any of our Tableau, Power BI, Spotfire, or ClickSense pre-built dashboards. All right, so now we're going to start uh, looking at some different visualizations by question type. So right now we're using Tableau uh, to visualize the data. Uh, that is my favorite and most recommended uh, data visualization tool. Um, we're gonna first take a look at geographic data. So this is in a survey whenever you ask someone uh, for a zip code, a state, a city, a uh, country. Um, I always recommend doing a zip code because you can always get a zip code to county or state, uh, country, etc. a crosswalk. And whenever somebody types in a zip code um, in, the, in the survey, they only have five digits. It's a lot easier to misspell a city or state name than a five digit zip code. So with a zip code, you can get the, the kind of the lowest level of granularity. Um, and then you can just uh, find a, a free geographical file uh, to bring in city, state, county, etc. So that leads less room for error whenever people misspell cities, states, etc. All right, so I always recommend getting a zip code. Now, um, with geographic data, it's always great to map data. Um, so I'm mapping it at the zip code level. Right now, we're looking at uh, New York and Pennsylvania area. Um, we are uh, sizing the circles by the respondent count, and that's a distinct counter respondent ID. And we're coloring it also by respondent count. All right, so we can see where all of the people are in the zip code, and the bigger the circle, the more respondents are in that zip code. Now, like I said, if we had, um, if we brought in geographic data just from a, a, a file that we find on the internet, um, you can just do this by state or county or city or anything else. Okay, uh, but this is a good way to uh, to visualize geographical data. And like I said, I always recommend asking for a zip code whenever you create your survey. All right, next is ranking. So ranking is, is a little more difficult, right? Uh, so this example is, uh, please rate these competitors from high to low based on who you think has the largest market share. All right, so we uh, have the ranking one to four. So this is the whoever has the highest average score. Uh, Power BI was 2.61 on average, uh, 2.59, 2.47, 2.33. All right, so these bars here, you can see with a color. So this is 30% um, picked one, um, ranked Power BI is number one, 30.6% um, ranked at number two, 88% ranked at three, 30% ranked at four. All right, so you can see kind of the distribution in the background. You can see what the actual average score was and the rank of it. All right, so this is a good way of visualizing uh, the actual ranking data. Um, now you could just do, you know, one, two, three, four, of course, uh, but by having the actual kind of distribution in the background, you can see how that average is made up. Um, and it's kind of a nice way of visualizing it. All right, net promoter score. So this is a uh, NPS score based off of detractors, uh, passive, and promoters. Uh, so you can see how many are uh, passive, promoters, and detractors. Um, that is, you know, the ranking of one through ten, and then we bucket those up, and then we count distinct uh, respondents for each, and then we come up with the NPS score, uh, which we put it here. All right, so this is split out by gender. We could just have it, you know, a total NPS score if we wanted, um, and we can see what the total is, uh, or we can have it split out by pretty much any field we had in our survey. All right, so this gives us, once again, kind of the distribution in the background, just like the ranking, but also gives us our NPS score. So this is a, just a, a better kind of visual way of, of viewing it. All right, next one is numeric. All right, this one I like uh, because here you normally you see an average, right? You just get what the average of whatever is. So in this one is how much do you spend on a uh, SAS software as a service per year, right? Um, so normally you just get an average number. But this you get to see distribution also. So we got what the actual average is for female and male. We can split this up or have it in just one view. Um, so we got what the average is. And then we see all of the answers. So all of these circles are all independent answers of what people answered. The larger the circle,
circle, the more people answer it. So we can see kind of what the distribution is. Um, and then with this, uh, it's called a box whisker plot. We can see what the upper and lower uh, hinges and whisker is, what the median is, what the average is, and then any outliers. So this gives you a lot of information um, because if you just look at the average, you kind of just kind of seeing things with your eyes closed, right? So this gives you average plus a lot more information. So I like this for a numeric. Sometimes it's a little confusing for some people, but it's a very powerful one. All right, matrix. So this is a matrix style question, um, very similar to like I kind of saw with the, the ranking in NPS, right? But this is just the distribution. So um, this is uh, extremely, very often, somewhat and not so, uh, going across as far as the colors. And then we have um, all of the matrix rows going down. Okay, so you got the columns going across, make sure rows going down, uh, you hover over it, you can see what the percentage is and the number of respondents. All right? So this is a very simple one. Uh, you see this very often, um, and it's because it's, it's kind of the most effective. All right, so this one is a really good one for matrix. All right, single and multiple choice. So this one is, is very simple. Um, it's really uh, very popular and, and, and really easy to create. Uh, when you do the multiple choice, though, you do gotta you know make sure you're counting distinct respondents instead of just counting rows because you know more than one person can answer uh, a different answer. Uh, but a bar chart works perfect for these. All right. So let's keep it simple with this one. We're showing uh, the percent of total and the uh, actual number of respondents here. Uh, if you hover over it, I gave it the kind of the equation so you can have it all but a, a regular bar chart works great for this um, I don't try to do anything too fancy for these all right open-ended everybody kind of hates open-ended all right um, you can't really do much with it uh, you can create a list um, basic list um, that and that list can be filtered by you know different answers from different questions um, and at least you can see you know what's out there um, or you can do something like a word cloud depending on what your data looks like um, if you have like a whole bunch of long sentences then of course word cloud doesn't work but if you have some keywords uh, word cloud does look nice as well as you can do some grouping um, to make your word cloud but you know open it is, is a very hard one so I normally do a list or a word cloud if my uh, survey data makes sense to do it but kind of the cool thing is if you do the open end list you're able to filter the data um, as well as like split the data so for example I can see what my females and my males said right so you can see what's the difference between the two um, I also normally sort it just in case you know there is like keywords or something if somebody answered the same thing I can see uh, what the kind of the most common ones are all right so those are all of the popular question types now usually no matter what survey platform you get your data from you can usually clean your data up in order to get it into a right format to use those types of charts. All of these charts that you saw today are in Visual Survey's Tableau dashboard template. So you can try Visual Survey for free. Just plug in your survey data from any survey software, uh, run it through the software, download our dashboard templates, and you can have all of these charts without having to create anything in, in Tableau. All right, well, I'll see you next time.